Today we're doing brakes on the 2015 Chevy Silverado 4-wheel drive 5.3 liter. A few things you'll need other than a big smile on your face because you love doing brakes are these items here. You need a floor jack and you need a jack stand, brake pads, brake parts cleaner, some steel wool, a toothbrush, sockets, deep well, some wrenches, a C-clamp, that's a 6 inch as you can tell, and some sort of impact or breaker bar or some sort that you can get your lug nuts off with. And you'll need this gem here, a Torx number 27. The brake pads that I'm using today are from AutoZone and they got DCG1363 is the part number. Here's the guides. You will need some grease. These did come with grease, uh, but here's another packet in case I want to get it super greasy. Got some gloves, keep your hands clean. Let's take a look at the rotors. At first, these rotors will look like a brown box special, but they are also made uh, by Duralast, part number 55097DL. If I haven't said it already, we're doing the front. Check your truck up on the frame right there. Before you get it in the air, throw your emergency brake on. I placed a jack stand on the frame as well, so everybody gets a little bit of joy of holding this truck up. I'm using a Craftsman Impact uh, wrench. It actually was my wife's, and I stole it from her. Because I got tired of using the torque bar. So this is a 22 millimeter deep well impact safe socket. So just going to remove these lugs. I do have it in the air. I'm going to hold it to get them broke free. I didn't mention before, but a three or four pound sledgehammer will come in very handy in the next process. Now that we got the wheel off, we got to get this caliper off. And that bolt right there, and also there's one down here on the other side you can see right there in the middle those have to come off so that's our next step the bolt that we're doing is a 19 millimeter fits right on there use the box inside and always remember that lefty loosey and righty tiny and on this one it's reverse because it's on the opposite side you're actually going to be going this way what i'm going to use is this hammer and i'm going to tap on that supported by my hand these two bolts are not as pain in the butt as the rest of them don't try to put a whole ton of pressure on these Something else to note about these is there's a bolt right here, or the part that that bolt's actually going into, that if you turn it, sometimes it slides. You can see it's somewhat moving there right now. If you just pull on it towards the inside of the truck, it'll stay in position. When you're retightening these, you might have to hold onto those with another wrench in order to get that back tight. See, it's just short. It's not real long. It's just holding things in place. I generally don't go yanking the caliper out of there, which is this part. <sighs> Can't really get it to move, but this part right here, I leave it in position until we get the next part uh, undone. The only reason we went ahead and did that now is because it's held in position, the whole assembly, by two other bolts we're about to remove, and it's easier to just do it right now and get those out. And then once we take these out, we can take the whole thing by itself and sit it up here. And then GM, instead of sticking with the same size bolt in this general area, which is generally the same job, they switch to an 18. So get yourself an 18 box in. And inside here, there'll be a bolt that you can see there hard to do through viewing through a phone there and we'll also remove that one and the one that's down here right there but not that one or that one and these two bolts are usually a joy to get off so don't worry about having to break your truck and have to get them out of there they're generally rusted shut and they got loctite on them original from the factory so have fun well, I've got my first one loose, and as you can tell, this is a much bigger bolt, and you can see that Loctite on there, how much they put on there at the factory. That's why, if you once you get to this point, you'll realize that, boy, it took a lot of kinetic foot-pounds of impact to get that out of there, but I guess there's a reason for that. Kind of want your wheel and hub and brakes all there while you're driving. So once you have these two beauties out, this whole thing is loose. Sometimes It's considerably loose. This thing will want to pop off, but... Sometimes you have to hit beat on this because your brake pads are actually on to your caliper right now. Try to get that off there. A bunch of rust and things will come out of there. That's normal. See? Everything's free. And this piece right here is actually free from the whole caliper itself so you just find a nice safe spot to sit it up there for right now and on this next step we're trying to remove this rotor since you took the lug nuts off and the wheel off and the whole caliper assembly there it's just sitting there sometimes they come off sometimes they don't this one's obviously on there I'm pulling on it 
So that's where this trusty thing comes in handy again. So when you hit on this, it's really loud. And you don't just beat it on one side, rotate it around a little bit. And at that point, I discovered after I beat on my rotor for a little bit that just like Honda does with a Phillips head little set screw to hold the rotor in place, what you'd think about six lug nuts holding on the wheel would be sufficient to hold that rotor in place during its use. But Chevrolet puts a torque screw in there. And I got a T45 and a 55 and a 65 and a 75 and an 85. And I've got some ones that are smaller than the 45. But I don't have probably what this is, which is a 35. So now we'll take a break and run up to the parts store in my wife's car so I can get me another Torx head to get this little set screw out to hold my rotor in place. Here we go. Well, looks like it might be in here. I went ahead and tested this, but that's a Torx 27, as you can see there. And there's that little set screw, that, and there it is, a 27. Now, from back in the day when I used to work on dirt bikes, I got this hand impact tool for screws that are stuck. Obviously, this torque is stuck, and there's no way to get it out with that fashion. So I don't have a true connector from a whatever it is, 3-H drive to a quarter-inch drive, which is what this fancy 27 Torx is uh, driven by. So I'm going to use, I guess it's just an Allen wrench type connection there that when jammed into here it actually works so now I'm going to try to remove that Torx again so I pre-soaked my little screw there that I've been trying to get out that really does nothing and my Torx head just totally stripped it out it's uh, one big hole right now so now I'm just going to drill it out of there So the head of it just came off. Kind of did it like a pop rivet. I'm sure that's a thousand degrees. And that was using a 5 16 drill bit. So now we can get back to what we were doing after that one hour charade trying to do this. Simple operation right there. So I'll clean up some of the mating surfaces. Some people use a wire brush, I just use sandpaper. Go around the outside and in between here and anywhere that new caliper is going to rest on the face. You don't have to make it spick and span, just clean it up some. Next step involves this new rotor. All we're going to do is take the plastic off of it. And I guess I do still have somewhat of a stud there. So I'm going to line up one of these two fine holes they put in here. Actually it's that one that's beveled out. Square it up with it. And you can see the screw that I drilled out. And there's my rotor. Most American cars and cars made before they started putting these goofy things in them. It just sat there like that. It's totally fine. Then you get everything back in there. The caliper holds it there and then you put the lug nuts back on and that's really what's holding that on. That's doing nothing. Besides making your day harder. So now we're down to the caliper. So now I've got the caliper rested up here. You can zip tie those down or whatever you want to do, but I just leave them up there. We're going to take those, separate the two. Now, there's where actually the parts that engage to push the brakes together. I don't know what they are. They're hydraulic somethings, part of the caliper. But here's your brake pads. The reason I sat it on there like this and lifted that off is because this is in the same position that it goes back onto the truck. So you're going to have to slide these brake pads out. Sometimes they got little clips and things on them. You can see a little tab in here. I'm touching the end of it right there. I de decompressed the one on this side, pushing on it with that little tiny Torx. You could use a screwdriver or something, but that'll allow you to actually get the brake pad out. So as this brake pad comes out of the caliper, and that's the position that it was on, on the truck, all I do is I move it out and I sit it on the ground so that I know when I look and compare it to the brake pads I'm putting back on, I'll get everything back exactly how it's supposed to go. Now I'm going to do this side the same. So what I have here is the caliper as it goes on the truck. One brake pad laid down and another brake pad laid down. And when I say comparison, you can see that little warning tab that's coming off the right hand side of there. I can get that all uh, matched back up for the new pair that goes back on here. So get this all cleaned up with grease and all that good stuff and spray clean it and brake parts cleaner. So that's my clean caliper now. And this is a good time whenever you get it 
to this point being clean if you fit there's value in painting your calipers like fluorescent green or something to make your vehicle or truck go faster this would be a good time to do that but i don't really care it's clean enough to put brake pads back on and i'm just trying to make it so that my truck will stop new brake pad time now you can see i got that warning thing right there there's that one's warning thing they're all matched up the same this side doesn't have any warning tracks but it's all there new brake pad old brake pad and uh these here these guides they'll snap into place somehow i'll have to figure that out you know they just snap in from the top line them back up you'll see little scratch marks where the ones came off try to square them back up with those and keep them just as close as they were uh, originally and then you'll take some grease and goo those tracks up and uh put them on the you know the actual brake pads don't put you know total like a ton of stuff but make it so it's nice and lubed up for you know the first beginning of the operation of the truck getting broke in with the brakes and the life of it hopefully it'll stay in there long enough to actually do what it's supposed to do so that's the next step here's where this big c clamp comes in usually you'd open up your brake uh fluid reservoir i'm not going to i've never had really an issue with it i'm going to put one side here and then the other side here and i'm going to compress these these are pretty much already compressed but you want them in as far as you can get them when you push on this side that side is going to come out and when you push on that side this side is going to come out so get them until they equalize out pressure wise and uh just make it so that you got enough clearance in here so you can put uh this contraption back together so if you can tell a difference between before and after that those did go in about a quarter to a half an inch or so so that's all you get now that you got your brake pads in place like this all greased up with the new tracks in there and you didn't get grease all wall or all over the uh new brake pads these smaller bolts that you took out first go ahead and put this and this back together you don't have to run these home just get them where they're nice and snug uh, and actually one unit i'm just going to flip that over remember that this is how it goes on the truck and then put it in its relative spot lined up in these great big bolts that were really hard to get out you're gonna try to get one in there just started and then once you got one in go ahead and take your other bolt and put it into place but we're not trying to actually mount this thing yet taking the weight off of the whole caliper while you're trying to hand run these in or tighten these bolts helps out a lot so on those same big bolts once you get them in there and everything's nice and squared up and there's nothing in a bind go ahead and put a little bit of tension on them tighten them up a little bit further until they rest against their mating surface right before you'd actually put the final torque on it just get it in better in the position now that you, every, you know everything's going or fitting together smoothly just go ahead and give that a little torque so at this point we have our rotor on if you were able to save this uh, you would put that screw back in at whatever point when you got the rotor back on but you know on mine I don't have that option and calipers in place brake pads are in there the oils in there the new guides calipers in place and all the bolts are snug so everything's back together nicely everything kind of free spins you know so I'm going to go ahead and torque all these bolts to specifications and uh, I don't know what those are but I'm just going to beat them pretty hard on the back ones and the other ones I'm going to probably put quite a bit of torque on them but as they came off there wasn't a lot of foot pounds to get it loose so uh, just check your manual. I'm uh, just kind of going by feel on these. I'm not real concerned with it but you should be. And just remember I'm not a mechanic. I'm just a human trying to put brake pads and calipers on my truck. In order to finish this job up, I'm going to tighten this, bolt my wheel back on, and uh, lower it down and then move to the other side. Hopefully it's just as joyous time as this side's been, and uh, go from there. So hopefully this helped. I would probably suggest watching some other uh, brake pad and front caliper replacement videos before you just roll on the one you just viewed here, if you did view the whole thing. And uh, so... 
Thanks for watching.